good evening, dearly beloved. Trust you and yours have had a good day. You got a minute? What's on my mind is the company that you keep. The company that you keep. That's what's on my mind tonight. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, around verse 33, the scripture says, Evil communications corrupt good manners. And what that text is teaching us is that Hanging out with the wrong people, a man can have uh, bad consequences. Yeah. Hanging out with the wrong folk, a man can be detrimental to your health, detrimental to your spiritual health, de detrimental uh, to your growth as a person, detrimental to you making it into heaven. Mm, yeah. Hanging out with the wrong people can do that. And the reason I know that because Lucifer was up there in heaven, and he was a man being responsible and being respectful, and then he went rogue. And when he went rogue, uh, the scripture says that one-third of the angels followed his evil example. And when they followed his e evil example, they got the same punishment that he did, thrown out of heaven, thrown out of God's presence, amen, thrown down. Uh, to to uh, yeah, one third of the angels uh, got thrown out because uh, they followed a Lucifer's bad example. Uh, so, who are you hanging with? As, as a good Christian, uh, you must be concerned about the company that you keep, and the reason why because you represent God. And the scripture says, what fellowship have light with darkness? What fellowship have Christ with Belial? It matters to God uh, regarding the company that you keep. Now, folk would say, well, Jesus ate with sinners. He sure did. But one thing that Jesus didn't do, Jesus did not allow the sinners to influence him away from God. Jesus did not allow the, the behavior and habits of the sinner, amen, to become his habits and behavior. And so if you're hanging out with people in your life and you're a Christian and uh, the people that you're hanging out with, uh, uh, they got more influence in your life than God. Those people have become your God. Yeah. If you're hanging out with people in your life and they got more influence with you than God, those people have become your God. Whoever you're hanging out with, you should never allow them to pull you away from Christ. Why? Because whoever your friends are, uh, they don't have no heaven or hell to put you in. So if you got some friends and they got such pull with you, uh, they, they're pulling you away from God, you need to get some new friends. Yeah. Or you need to get some courage or you need to get get in your Bible or you need to get on your prayer knees. If you got some friends who do not love God like you love God and they love the world and they're pulling you into the world away from the word, those people have become as a God to you. And so you need to be careful of the company that you keep. Uh, why? Because it can be detrimental to your health. Uh, it can be detrimental to your mental health. It can be detrimental to your finances. It can be detrimental to hanging with your family. There are some people who got some friends. And some of them have spent so much time with their friends that they've lost their families. Yeah. All, gone all the time and, and out doing what, what the friends are doing and, and, and lost their families because they have not been at home taking care of their homework. And so it is very important uh, that you be mindful of the company that you keep. Uh, why? Uh, because it's God's will. The Bible said about all appearance of evil. That's what the scripture says. The book says that we ought to walk in self-control. That's what the book says. The book said give no place to the devil. That's what the book says. And so if you're hanging out with people who love the devil and they don't love Christ and you call yourself a Christian, you need to get yourself some new friends. You need to get yourself some new friends. Uh, because they're not going in the same direction that you are. If you're going to hang out with people, you must have a purpose. 
when Jesus ate with sinners, sat down and ate with sinners, he was not there, amen, to condone them in their sin. He was not there to join them in their sin. He was there to call them out of their sin. He was there to show them love so they can, uh, he can have an inroad to show them there is a better way to live. And not only a better way, they need to know that he was the way. When Jesus sat with sinners, it was not to, amen, strengthen them in the world. It was to call them to glory. Call them to, to the, uh, to call their attention to the gospel that they might be saved. And so when we talk about Jesus eating with sinners, let's, let's be sure to, to, to talk about it correctly. He did not sit with sinners to condone their sin. He did not sit with sinners to strengthen them in their sin. He was there to pull them out of their sin. And so if you got some friends, hey amen, and they don't love Jesus like you love Jesus, be mindful. The Bible said, let your light so shine before men that may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You have a responsibility to share the light of Christ. You have a responsibility to show the love of Christ. And so if you're hanging with them, but you've stopped, you begin to do what they're doing, you need to stop. You need to repent. You need to go in a different direction. You need to ask God for strength. You need to ask God for wisdom. You need to ask the Holy Spirit to help you because you're being pulled out of the will of God. And if the Lord is your shepherd, uh, you need to stick with the shepherd. Why? Because he leads you in the path of righteousness. Why? Because you have his name. And so if you're hanging out with people and they're pulling you into a hellish direction, you're shaming God. You're shaming the name of God. You're grieving the Holy Spirit of God. And you're shaming your own testimony. This is important. We don't see it as important today because we're not walking as closely to God as we should be. We, we are more, we're, we, 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 we're more uh, walking with the world, too many of us, than walking in the Word. And that's why it's difficult for the church to find traction uh, in drawing people to Christ, because too many of us are walking more like the world than we are the Word. And we wonder why folk is falling away from church, because sometimes the folk can't tell who the church is. We're talking like them, we we thinking like them, we acting like them. We're doing the things that they do. The sinful thing that they, that we shouldn't be doing. We begin to engage them and, and engage in their lifestyle, their activities to the shame of our testimony. And then don't know, want nobody to say anything about it. Oh, you think you better? No, it's not about being better. It's about being righteous. It's about honoring Christ. The Bible said, if you're a good Christian, do all to the glory of God. And so if it brings shame upon God, you and I need to turn from it, no matter who it is. If it's a person, that man, that, uh, that hates God with a passion, don't want nothing to do with him, uh, blaspheme the name of Christ, why would you hang out with a person of that nature? When you know they don't want to Jesus, why would you do that? Why? Be careful of the company that you keep. And these are lessons that we got from our grandmothers and grandfathers all those years ago. And it hasn't changed today. And this lesson did not stand that did not start with our grandmothers and grandfathers. It started with God. When God was getting ready to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. He told them about the people that was in the land, the idol worshipers. And he advised them, don't get so connected with these people that you start practicing the godless things that they do. And what did Israel do? They did contrary to what he said. What happened? It became a stumbling block in their faith. It became a stumbling block and it caused many of them not to enter into the promised land. They died before they inherited the promise. Why? Because they chose the way of sin. They chose the way of unrighteousness. They chose the way of evil. Why? Because of the company they were keeping. It stunted their faith. It started their growth. And some of them turned away from God. And there are people who are still going to church today 
who've gotten so connected in the community with the people who are not in church. They have no faith. They have no fire. They have no faithfulness. Why? Because of the company they're keeping. And we're doing the same thing today. There are a lot of people who are going to church who got the wrong company. They talking like the world. We looking at these TVs and on the internet. Liars. Liars. We listen to liars. We begin to repeat the lies that they tell. While these politicians are liars. We're listening to their lies and repeating their lies. Pattern ourselves after them. Take it upon their characteristics. Rather than the cloak of Christ. The cloak of righteousness. The cloak of holiness. That's what we're doing. Why? We identify more with sinful people than our Savior Jesus Christ. That's why it's important that you be mindful of the company that you keep. And don't figure yourself so strong that you don't believe that you can be influenced. If Lucifer could cause one third of all the angels to follow his evil example in heaven, don't you think you're so strong that you can do contrary to the word of God? And it not affect you. The first problem is you thinking. The book teaches this. This is what you should do. Walk in the spirit. And should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What the text said. Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. He shall Direct our path. Be mindful of the company that you're keeping. Hang with people that bring you closer to Christ. Hang with people that can get a prayer through. Hang with people that can correct you with the word of God. Hang with people that can encourage you to keep doing the right thing. Hang with people that can grab you by the hand and pray for you. Speak life into you. Hang with people that inspire you to stick with Christ. If you're hanging with people who hate Jesus, who love sin, and you're not trying to influence them to Christ, you're shaming the name of the Lord. And you're shaming the testimony that you have. Be mindful of the company you keep. If you keep company with gossips, most likely you're going to start gossiping. If you keep company with liars, be careful. You'll mess around and start lying. If you keep company with people that's negative, be mindful that negative spirit can be catching. Hang with people that draw you to Christ. And you be that person that draws others to Christ. You be that person that influences others to seek Jesus. Because that's our calling as Christians. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever we have commanded. Every relationship we have should be intentional. And the relationship, our, uh, the intentionality about our relationships is we are to draw people to Christ. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. That's what we're called to do. So when you in Rome, you do not have to do what the Romans do. Mm -mm. When you're in Rome, you, just, you do what Jesus said. And speaking of that, Lot. Lot and Abram had their disagreement. Abram gave Lot the, the choice to pick a direction. He would go in the opposite direction. Lot shows Solomon and Gomorrah. Not, it never had been there. It just looked good. Well watered. Thought it'd be good for his cattle. Thought it'd be good for his family. So Lot took his family, his, 
his cattle, his servants, and moved to Sodom and Gomorrah. And while there, the Bible said his soul was vexed every day. His soul was vexed. Why? Because of the company he was keeping. Sodom and Gomorrah was wicked. Lot didn't pray and ask God for direction. He decided what was best for him based on his fleshly observation. He went to Sodom and Gomorrah thinking it was going to be nice, but it ended up hell. The Bible said his soul was vexed every day from the wicked conversation of those evil people. Lot went in to Sodom and Gomorrah, a rich man, plenty of cattle, servants, a family. By the time he left Sodom and Gomorrah, he didn't have nothing but the clothes on his back. No cattle, no servants. Even his wife had become infected by the association with Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels told him to keep moving forward. And anybody that looked back would turn to a pill of salt. She turned to a pill of salt. Why? She couldn't get Sodom and Gomorrah out of her heart. When you get next to people, when you get so connected with people who do not love God like you love God, you can become so ingrained in them within your heart that you want to be more like them than Christ. That means you turned away from God. Lot went into Sodom and Gomorrah with everything. He left out with shame. That's where he left out. But the good news is, even though Lot's heart was vexed by the conversation of the wicked, he still loved God. And God still loved him. And even though him and Abraham had a disagreement, Lot was still covered by his association with Abraham and God spared his life because of his connection with Abraham be careful of the company that you keep keep connecting with folk that's connected to God and the blessings that flow from them folk can cover your life bring you peace bring you prosperity bring you joy. Be careful of the company that you keep. Begin today to analyze your circle and make sure Jesus is the head of that circle. Because if Jesus is not the head of that circle, you're in the wrong circle. Here's the way Jesus put it. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can pluck them out of my hands. Who else could you hang with that can give you eternal life? Don't throw Jesus away for the temporary pleasure of sin because you've seen the power of sin. Sin can become an addiction. Sin can become an affliction. Sin can be deadly. And we're not talking simply physical. We're talking hell cast away from God because we chose the wrong crowd. Be careful of the company you keep. If you love Christ, hang out with people that love Christ, that can affirm you in Christ, that can correct you in Christ, that can love you in Christ. If you're out there doing what the world doing, this is what I tell you. A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. A good
good tree could not bring forth evil fruit. An evil tree cannot bring forth good fruit. Those are the words of Christ. If you have fellowship with him, he said this in John chapter 8, around verse 31 and 32. You are my disciple if you continue in my word and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Be careful of the company that you keep. If you have to move away from people who are moving you away from God, so be it. If you have to distance yourself from your own family who distance you from God, so be it. The question is, who do you love the most? The book teach if you love your mother or your father, your son or your daughter, more than you love Christ. The scripture says you're not worthy of Christ. Ain't no place in heaven for anyone who loves a human, a dog or a cat, a car or house or dollar bill more than God. No place in heaven for anyone who listens to the world more than they listen to the word. No place in heaven. Read First John chapter 2. The Bible said to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of Christ. If you so love the world and the things of the world and what they do and how they do and who they do it with, the book said to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of, ain't no enemies of Christ in heaven. Mm -mm. There's no enemies of Christ in heaven. You got to choose. You got to decide where will you spend your eternity. Maybe you like like Judas, you like to hang out with people that got money. So you take your 30 pieces of silver, sell Jesus out. There are many alive today who all they think about is money. They love talking about people that's got money. Money can't buy your way into the gate. Your friends can't get you into the gate. The only thing that can get you in the gate is your testimony. That you love God above all else and all others. Don't let nobody so influence you that you allow them to lead you to hell. But that's a shameful end for somebody who could have had a great future at the right hand of the Father. Streets paved with gold. Everlasting love, joy, and peace. Sitting down at the table at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Enjoying sweet fellowship with God. It ain't no party on earth. Ain't no party on earth that can ever compare with that. But I understand. Everybody don't want to go to heaven. But if you don't want to go to heaven, you'll have to go to hell. The beautiful thing about God is this. He'll let you choose. If you choose your worldly friends over your faithful heavenly father, that's fine with God. He said, I'll render every man according to his works. I'd rather you be hot or cold than to be lukewarm. He'd rather you be all in or all out. So if you want to enjoy the pleasure of the world, go ahead. Go ahead. You'll get paid for your work. 
But if you want a better destiny, then you got to decide to keep company with people who are in Christ. Because when you keep company with those people, you're keeping company with Christ. He said, well, two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing in my name. There am I in the midst of them. Ain't no fellowship better than the fellowship of Christ. He shed his blood for you. He showed his love for you. I love you. I'm a brother's concern that we're going to be a Christian. We just don't need to be talking about it. We need to be about it. Now, I'll be honest with you. There are people in my life, or used to be in my life, who no longer speak to me in the same way. Because I serve Jesus Christ. I accept that. I still have love for them. I try to be humble in my comportment and compassionate in my way. Because I know God can change a hard heart. Because he changed mine. There was a time I didn't want to be in the company with no church. I didn't want to hear no preacher. I didn't want to hear no choir singing. I didn't want nothing to do with no Jesus. I wanted my sin. But mama kept praying. My wife kept pressing her way to church even without me. And sooner or later, it was my day. It was my day to come down that aisle, give the preacher my hand and guide my heart. And when I got serious with God, my life changed. My friendships changed. My attitude changed. My conversation changed. My desires changed. And guess what? I still have a flesh nature in me, a sin nature. And we wrestle. Because that sin nature wants to overtake and bring me back to the past. But ain't nothing in Egypt I want. I want my promised land in the presence of God. I want it with everything I got. I can't go back to Egypt. It ain't nothing, it ain't nothing in Egypt I want. It ain't nothing in sin, that sinful way, those sinful uh, things I used to do. It ain't nothing back there I want. Sometimes the devil bring that stuff back to my mind. Mm -mm, can't go back. Mm -mm, been delivered, been saved. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing good about the life I used to live except for the fact he gave me a second chance to live a better life, a higher life, a more powerful life, a more freeing life. That's where I am today. That's why I can't go back in that old way. Can't go back. Can't go back to the cussing. The lying, the manipulating, the selfishness, the pride. Can't let that stuff dominate me anymore. I got the Holy Spirit. He is my power. I don't have to yield to those things anymore. He is my constant companion. He walks with me and talks with me and tells me that I am his own. I can be in a room full of people. Don't know nobody. And be just as comfortable as I can be. Because I'm rolling with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everywhere I go, they're right there with me. Right there with me. But there's a time in the past when I didn't have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Man, I'd be, I'm in the wrong place. Now, mm -mm, I'm in the right place. If this is where the Father wants me to be, I may not know anybody in here, but I'm going to let my little light shine. Maybe somebody down in Nevada that's trying to get home to Christ. Dear the beloved, watch the company that you keep. If you're hanging in it with anybody that's pulling you away from Christ, you got some decisions to make. You got some decisions to make. Do you love them more than you love Jesus Christ? Do you really want to spend your eternity apart from Christ? Or do you want to spend your eternity with Christ? That's a choice you have to make. That's a choice you have to make. I made Jesus my choice. I pray you do too. 
God bless and God keep you. Amen.